Except the ranks and almost the man totally in charge. Steve Moss is still, still totally in charge. Um, they have Oliver's have beautiful markets. They're, they're, I love shopping there. And they have um, just beautiful produce, beautiful meat, um, just wonderful stores. And uh, again, he's been working there for a long time. And he's got three kids and um, dogs. And he's here to talk to us about not only about Oliver, but also about uh, shop local. Thank you, sir. You advance it just by pushing that button. So true here. I gotta hold the microphone. So um, I'm also here to talk to you a little bit about local. Um, to start with, what, what is local? Um, it, it's a pretty vague term, all in all, uh, especially as business uses it. But Merriam-Webster defines local as relating to or characteristic of a particular place, not general, not widespread, uh, primarily serving the needs of a limited district. Now, when business uses Local, they use it to apply to essentially what they need. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the grocery here because what I know best. Um, Safeway. Safeway defines local as the state of California, um, which is true. Uh, we all live in California. Many of us are proud to live here. Maybe not all of us. But it's a pretty large place. Um, other stores like Whole Foods, um, they have a couple of different definitions. Uh, some stores actually get to define local on their own. And so maybe a store in our area is gonna call Northern California local. Uh, but worst case scenario, they also define local as the state that the store exists in. Now when I think of California, it's a pretty large place. Uh, see on the map here, Sonoma County is just a real small portion of it. And when I think of places like Los Angeles, Merced, Barstow, I'm not thinking at all Sonoma County. Um, Oliver's got on board with the uh, local, uh, local push uh, a little over 10 years ago. And at that time, we actually defined it as Sonoma County and the five surrounding counties. But as everybody else started getting on board with it, whether it were uh, the other grocery retailers or just business in general with many different definitions, we wanted to play to what we saw as a competitive advantage for us, and that was Sonoma County. So we redefined local, and our message became local is Sonoma County. Sonoma County grown, Sonoma County owned, produced, whatever you might call it. Now, has that worked out for us? So far, so good. It accounts for about 27% of our business, over $32 million annually. Now, going local in Sonoma County is something you can't do everywhere. Sonoma County is a really special place. We have some things available to us that aren't available elsewhere. Uh, we're an agriculturally based community, we're food centric, we have things like some of the finest wines in the world, local artisan bread makers, olive oils, local artisan cheese makers, like we even have local seafood right off the Bodega, uh, right off the Sonoma County coast of Bodega Bay. And everybody loves Dungeness crab, right? Yeah. Uh, not to mention the Grappenstein apple, uh, Paluma poultry and eggs, things that you just can't do elsewhere. So it makes it really easy to be local in Sonoma County. Well, kind of. Sonoma County agriculture accounts for about $750 million annually in production. This allows for a lot of creative people in our area to get after some things you wouldn't be able to do elsewhere. Chefs, for instance. We have some great restaurants around here, not to mention other entrepreneurial types. Think of brands like Waiaki right down the street here, right? 10, 15 years ago, just a local company. Now it's international. They're all over the place. In aggregate, Sonoma County 
still imports me far more than it exports, which is probably true of every every county. Sorry. Um, in terms of retail sales around these agricultural um, opportunities, it's about one point five six billion dollars in. So what do the numbers say about local? Missed a slide, all right. What do the numbers say about local? Um, they speak volumes to going local. The New Economics Foundation, which is an independent economic think tank in London, did a little less study. Uh, they compared buying local produce from a national chain in London versus buying local produce from a CSA or farmer's market. And as they followed the money, they found out that less than half of the money spent at the national chain was kept in their local communities. Oliver's Market in switching to Sonoma County as our local brand wanted to see if there's something between our marketing pitch as well. Um, it's one thing to say, hey, local, let's go, ha. But it's another thing if the numbers support it. So in 2010, we commissioned with Sonoma State University to do a study for us. And what they found was powerful. They, they came up with, with what's called the multiplier effect. Essentially, what this is, is it's the dollars spent locally that have a much greater effect in our local economy. <clears throat> Think of it as uh, throwing a, a, a pebble into a pond. As you see the ripples go through the pond, it touches all parts of the pond. That same thing is happening when you're spending your money locally. It's touching many more parts of our community than, mo than money spent with national chains that flows out of our community. So first, if we're combined, um, comparing a local product with a non-local product, we have to be certain that there's actually something to compare to. We have to have the ability to produce, sell, create that product locally. Um, don't take like car manufacturing. We're not making cars here in Sonoma County. I wouldn't suggest that, hey, there's no local cars, don't own a car. Uh, but when things are comparable, when we can actually do them here, what, what is continually found is that more of the money stays in our local communities. That's an opportunity for all business owners, all people who work for local businesses, and every member of a community. It's in our best interest to keep this money local. It supports contractors, professional services, distributors, growers, suppliers, and other small retailers. This study found, as you can see on the slide here, that when you spend $100 in retail, if you spend it at a local store, 32% more of that money is kept in your local community. What that also means is 32% more taxes generated. Now I know we're not all in love with taxes, but those are things that pay for essential services, police, you know, like fire, schools, streets. If I need more on the streets, there's a little pothole around here. Um, <laughs> it, it pays for libraries, it pays for parks, things that as, as a member of this community, I appreciate a lot and I imagine most do. So what this suggests is not that we look to become self-sufficient and do everything ourselves here in Sonoma County, but we need to play to our comparative advantage. We simply just need to shift the balance. Can we do a little bit more locally? And of course you can. We have the resources and the raw materials. We need to sell and produce what we have an advantage to be better than others. Again, funny examples, don't try to have local bananas or um, grow local coffee. Those things don't just, don't, they don't work around here. But there are a lot of things that do work. To put these numbers in real terms, if you take a business like Oliver's Market, $150 million in sales, with these numbers, we're going to keep $36 million more in the community than spending money on a non-local product at a non-local business. Obviously, our community needs a lot more than just $36 million. But as we participate in the community, those numbers add up pretty quickly. So in producing what we have, an opportunity to produce better than others, we need to raise awareness on what local is. Don't assume that every consumer knows exactly what local is what it means, or that they're just going to shop your business 
because it says local. It's just another factor in their decision-making process. Consumers, like all of us, have budgets. They have so much money to spend, and they're going to spend their money on what makes sense to them. And sometimes it's local, but we have to be competitive in being a local partner. Do not take customers for granted, because to them, price matters. Don't take a local purchase for granted. People won't buy just because it's local. Again, it's part of the decision-making process. So how do we create value from local? Value has many parts. Obviously, price is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but quality is another part of it, as is trust. Trusting that local vendor, trusting that local service provider, trusting that local chef. It's also nice to see a friendly face. Um, hopefully, most of you know what, what Cheers is, right? You know, Norm walks into the bar, afternoon, everyone. Norm, everybody knows him. Um, it, it's, it's nice to go into a place where everybody knows who you are. So it's important for businesses to get to know their customers as well. Uh, we need to provide helpful information. Uh, it, it's, it's really nice when you uh, go, go into a store and you're looking for a product and someone can say, no, no, that's not what you need. Try this. This is a better way to do it. You're going to be able to find those things, hopefully, at the local businesses. And local businesses have the ability to change, to use their customers' needs. At Oliver's, we actually invest in, in an individual. She spends 40 hours a week just answering those little customer service, customer requests. Um, they can put a box or do online. Um, in doing so, this is, allows us to be a little more nimble than our competitors. And local businesses need to really focus on being more nimble. If you think of a barge trying to move, maneuver, around the, um, maneuver around the ocean, it takes a lot of time for that thing to turn, steer, get to where it's going. Uh, local businesses can be that speedboat. We can be the one that's changing direction, providing things for our customers that they're asking for, but we need to listen to them. So as part of this, we're also selling information as uh, local businesses. Education is essential to get the impacts of local across to our consumers. Branding and messaging need to include what local is, what local means, and why it's a benefit to the customer. We have to share the values with them. Big business is obviously on board with local. I'll give you an example. I was just in uh, Safeway in Oakland um, about two, three weeks ago. Found a big end cap of uh, Sonoma County wines. It's a local, local Sonoma County wines. And I'm going, all right, well, it's the Bay Area. I get it. it's local. It's not Southern California. It's also not Sonoma County. That, that really wasn't local in my mind. But they're getting on board with it because that's what their customers are asking for. That's what people are looking for. So it's really essential that we define what local is. And the more we can base it on Sonoma County, the better it is for us. National chains can't claim this. They're sending a large portion of their money out of the local trade area, back to their corporate headquarters. They're paying taxes on it there. Um, not that that's the worst thing in the world, but if we have an opportunity to keep it in our community, events like this, that this is community. It benefits all of us. Our consumers aren't reading studies to find out what's going on, what local is, how it benefits them. So the message of local needs to be shared by word of mouth. It's our best promotion. And certainly sharing what the value chain is to buying local so people understand it in more real terms is important. In my funny little slide here, we have a tomato. A tomato may be grown on a farm here in Sebastopol. That tomato is picked and sold to the local grocery store. The chef goes into the local grocery store, buys the tomatoes, creates some, creates some amazing tomato soup that uh, increases his business. So he gets to hire another server. Well, in hiring the server, he's paying more wages, which means there's more money now to spend in the community. And the server goes to the grocery store, buys more products. It, it, keeps, it keeps in the circle. It stays in our community. And the more people realize that it's staying in the community, the, the better it is for the local message. Sustainability is another option for us. Um, certainly the carbon footprint of something coming across seas from out of state from another country is much, much greater than it is for a product grown, produced, manufactured here in Sonoma County. Um, I don't want to get too political on climate change, so we'll just say a lower carbon footprint is better. 
Um, but there's obstacles. Obstacles are everywhere. One of our biggest obstacles in sticking with buying local, shopping local, or, or just being a local business is certainly the internet. I'd imagine most of us have purchased something on the internet. Uh, it's convenient, and often the prices are good. Well, at least they tell you that unless you've been watching the Amazon uh, issues lately. Uh, the resources these companies have available to them are, are far greater than what most small local businesses have. So again, we need to stay nimble. We need to find how we can create value here and, and resonate with our um, customer base. Think of the evolution of business. Uh, you guys have probably heard a little bit about Sears in the news lately. Um, Sears, once the, uh, you know, that, that Sears catalog was Christmas for everybody 20, 30 years ago. And just last week, the CEO um, said that he'd be surprised if his business lasts a few more years. People just aren't shopping that way anymore. They're going on the internet, they're going to Target, they're going to Walmart. Um, business evolves, and it'll continue to evolve. Um, we also face just basic economics. You know, in a free market economy, um, everybody's being competitive with each other. And if we just think that local is the answer to I'm going to survive, it's not. We, we need to be competitive. We need to figure out what quality is, what value is to our consumer base. And I'm certainly not suggesting the free market doesn't work. Um, it, it's going to continue. But we can find things in our products, such as integrity, having, having products that last, having products that actually work for our customers, holding ourselves accountable. Um, when you're shopping at a local retailer, when you're using a local service, these are members of your community. Um, I'd like to believe that members that share a community together are going to hold each other accountable um, and have a certain level of integrity that's much greater than someone that's answering a question for us back in New York when we have a complaint. Um. We also deal with imports. Imports are certainly a challenge. How the heck do you produce something in China and ship it here for less than I can make it here? That just doesn't make sense. But it's still how things are working. So I go back to my earlier point of our comparative advantage. When we're dealing with our local products, how can we be certain that we're giving something that has some value to a customer, not creating something that we can't be competitive with? We can't produce everything here. The trick is to find locally sourced goods and do our best to produce something our customers want. The outcomes are of this, they're vast. Uh, there's direct impacts. I go to the store, I go to my accountant, spend money there, he benefits, right? That's the direct impact. The indirect impact is they spend their money locally. But then there's the induced impact. And what I'm suggesting here is, you can see on the screen, if uh, you go to a retailer and you spend $100 on goods, well, they had to buy those goods, right? So let's assume those cost $75 from their supplier. If they're local, if this is a local supplier, that's $75 worth of sales from them should trigger another $30 in local purchases from, um, for other local businesses. And the retailer who sold $100 worth of goods, you're going to spend $10 on wages. And from that, you'll trigger another $5 in local spending and the retailer sold $100 worth of goods, would see a profit margin of about $15, triggering another $10 in local spending. So as you can see when you make your way around the circle, $100 worth of goods sold at a local retailer is generating another $45 in local impact for our communities. When you're spending locally, you're also increasing employment locally. Uh, employment, well, it's not so much of an issue right now with low unemployment, a lot of us are having a hard time finding people in the art of um, But when we did our study in 2010, we found that for every 10 full-time positions at Oliver's, we were generating 17 other full-time positions throughout the county. And, and those are also induced effects of shopping locally, partnering with other local vendors. So, local. It really is a community effort. We must participate in our communities, as we're all doing here. We need to treat our customers with respect. We need to maintain integrity in our brands. We do not give the customers a reason to go shopping elsewhere. We know how easy it is to lose a customer, how easy it is to walk into a place and they make a simple mistake 
and we go on to do something else. They provide a product that didn't work for us, we go shop somewhere else. They provide service for us that didn't meet our needs, we go somewhere else. We gotta get to know our customers. That will help with the community effort involved in local. Uh, and certainly, as I've mentioned several times, we cannot take our customers for granted. The power of the local movement is also the relationships. The relationships that we build with the people we see often, in person, face to face. The networking, the, the events like this. Um, word of mouth is certainly the best advertising for local. If I'm hanging out with a buddy and he wants to know the best pharmacist to go to, and I know Mark here, that, that's the word of mouth. You know, if, if Mark's taking care of me at his local business, that's who I'm going to refer somebody to. Um, it, it's a community-based participatory endeavor. So there really is something here. Shopping local it helps local businesses, it helps the communities, it helps suppliers, professional services, everybody who exists in the community. And as I mentioned earlier, services. When we generate more tax revenue, local tax revenue, we increase those services for police, fire, schools, libraries. Um, it, it's a benefit to everything that goes on within our communities. And revenues generate more employment, which starts that circle all over again. More money circling locally, more money circulating, like a pebble in the pond. The ripples are going everywhere in our community. Now this is a choice to invest in our communities, and we just need to put in the effort to make it happen. Are there different rules for grocery stores versus fruit stands versus farmers markets to say where different fruits and vegetables come from? Uh, the FDA has a, a program called COOL, Country of Origin Labeling. And every fruit and vegetable needs to be labeled with the country of origin. <coughs> for instance, uh, the, the FDA was in our store several years ago. And they go, hey, that, that apple doesn't say what country it's from. And it's Sebastopol. It's not a country. <laughs> so the same rule with the country. So does California need its own country? <laughs> That's not a question. question. The question is, uh, there's a community market here. Yes. Um, it's supposedly, supposedly it's local. Uh, okay. And I went to, the, I went to the jelly section, and there's Michigan jelly and Utah jelly and everything else. I noticed Kozlowski's here. What are some of the uh, the business reasons why they wouldn't have truly local jelly? Did they have any local jelly? None. None? I, I wish I could answer that. Um, I, I, I know that when Oliver's goes about choosing a selection, um, we pride ourselves on putting everything on the shelf we possibly can and letting the customers make the choice. What's selling is what takes up the shelf space. And depending on the size of your market, if you look at a a store like, we'll go to Safeway. Um, Safeway is a pretty large store, generally speaking, at least compared to Oliver's. Um, they can fit more products than we do, yet they have less than half the selection than we do. Uh, and they're running everything on SPINS data. It's a national cor um, corporation that uh, ranks products in their sales in, in districts and regions and nationally, and they slot things based on that reason. It's not going to be because the guy in the local community goes, I want Kozlowski jelly. Um, for a local business, I wish I could answer that. I think they're missing the boat. Yes? Um, when are you opening up in Sebastopol, and what business opportunities do you have open in your store? Uh, what employment opportunities, not business, employment. Got it. Uh, when are we opening in Sebastopol? As soon as we find a location. See ya. Just me a checker. Um, uh, uh, Oliver, said, as we've expanded, it's been more about um, the, the opportunity to go into a location, us running some some uh, some numbers on the location, and seeing if actually seeing if it'll actually fit. Uh, we opened our first new store for the first time, but that was more based on the developer chasing us down. Um, Oliver's is pretty conservative when we try to expand with cash and not money and loans and things like that. So. Yeah, if the opportunity raises its head, we'll be here. We'd love to be in Sebastopol. And now hiring, um, everything. Uh, in, the, in the current uh, climate of employment, uh, unemployment's very low. Uh, generally speaking, Oliver's uh, 
retail is, is sort of entry level, uh, which means we're competing with a lot of other retailers that are also hiring. Uh, pretty much if it exists, we're hiring for it. And I'd like to say that, that the real opportunity is that at Oliver's, like myself, I started when I was 17 as a banker, just five years ago. Uh, and, and I've been able to move up through, through the chain. Most of the people I work with on, on the leadership team also starting as, as baggers, as dishwashers, et cetera. So everything we're going Yes, sir. What's your policy on GMOs and uh, organic food? Our policy on GMO is the same as with everything else. We like to provide things for the customers and let them make the choices. When I spoke about selling information here in the presentation, that's also what Oliver's believes in. We want to give you the information to make the choices, which is why we believe in labeling GMO products so at least the customers can make an educated decision on what they're purchasing, why they do it is up to them. We shop at a particular store for any number of reasons. Sometimes it's price, sometimes it's convenience, sometimes it's a particular brand. But I have to tell you, you have one person who works behind your deli counter at Stony Point. I will drive, it's a little ways, but I will drive over there just to get her advice on what I'm going to buy. Absolutely amazing, and those are the kind of people that make us go to offers. And, and that's the local connection, that, that's the friendly face behind the counter that's giving me good information. You know, don't you want to know her name and yeah. pat on the back or something? Do you know her name? No, but I didn't stop her. I'm sorry. Open mouth and so she All right, so I'm just saying, if I describe her, you'll know who it is. Yes. Yes, we do accept the Go Local card. Uh, it's, it's very hard for us to use it because people spend so many more of their dollars at a grocery store. So, so the idea of trade is very difficult for us. So usually we have a promotional item in each week's ad, which actually jumped out of there for about six weeks because we were reformatting the ads and lost it, um, where it says a dollar off Penwood wine or 50 cents off Kazanski jelly. Gotcha. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, G and G was a very popular market for me because they had like had crab before Christmas and cheap and everything, and they had local products like Canterbury raviolis, which I liked. What else? Safe. <laughs> <laughs> it was cheap, right? Yeah. Well, the important part is it was cheap. Maybe some some Hendrix gin or uh, Lazarus, and but um, so Safeway takes those local ones over and of course it's it's a safe way it's no longer the local product and so forth is that a movement that's going on where the larger chains are buying out local markets that have a uh, a local clientele it, yes it, it absolutely is if, if you're a, not aware safeway was actually purchased by albertson's which is hold by a cap, held by a capital management group Cerberus capital management something of that sort um, and then they went and they bought Andronico's, another independent down in the Bay Area. They bought the G&G &G markets. Uh, they're making some play for Sprouts. Uh, oh, no. So it, it, it really is. It's, it's like every other type of retail. Uh, if you've noticed in the Oliver's ads, it's why we're promoting not just local, but also independent. Because there's very few independents left that are able to make changes in their business practices to provide the jam or the friendly face. Um, stores like Pacific Market, Community Market, Petaluma Market as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You like cheese? Or you choose one. There's something. You gave me four one nine. The number six six eight seven four. One, seven. Oh, you have two. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. 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 the money. So the four aces. Four aces. <laughs> we have a speaker gift for you. In case you have some grocery notes, you take four aces. Thank you very much. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to Okay, four aces. It's in there. Oh, sorry. Right. Four aces. We're going to make you four aces. <laughs> Any ace wins the money. Eight, eight. Oh, eight. Oh, eight. oh, man. Okay, well, thanks to Vicky, who is not.
not here for this one, but it's for you. You bet. Uh, Dirk Hart, Vicky, thank you. This is my joke. It's a classic. It's yes. the real reason the dinosaurs went extinct. Because they see they're smoking and you smoke it. <laughs> and you die. And, okay. Uh, Charlie, you have a joke? Damn old joke. I will. Uh, thinking about that golf tournament that's coming up reminded me of this joke. An elderly golfer uh, drove his ball into the rough, and when he went out to retrieve it, he spotted this frog. And the frog said, Help, I need help. And so he picked up the frog, and the frog said, I'm actually a beautiful young princess, and I had a spell cast on me that is turning me into this frog. A kiss from you will release the spell and I'll be yours forever. He dropped the frog in his pocket and the frog said, hey, what about the kids? And he said, well, at my age, I think I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> uh, thank you, Billy. Thanks everybody for coming. Happy trail. Happy trail.